passed my first test of public humiliation. Thank you for joining me for that. But now we got to train birds. So the first bird that I've been given the, the job of training is thinking of chickens. She is a chicken, but she's not any ordinary chicken. She's an extreme chicken. And you might ask yourself, well, what in the world can make this chicken extreme? Well, there's three things that make her extreme, and we're gonna find out what they are when we meet Agnes! <laughs> yeah. So Agnes is an extreme chicken because she's extremely fast! Whoa! It's like the chicken combine down here. She's also an extreme rock climbing chicken. Whoa! And then she's an extreme face jumping chicken. Wow! And those three things are what make Agnes an extreme chicken! And this out! Alright! Nice job, Agnes! Cool! Alright, well, that's the first bird that they gave me to train was Agnes the chicken. She did a pretty great job. So you can see I'm getting pretty good at training. I'm getting so good that I've trained some of the birds to do my job. That's cleaned up around here. So, this next bird I've actually trained. Do my job for me. Uh, so, Fiesta, why don't you come on out and we'll show everybody what I've trained you to do. Uh, so, Fiesta's a green wing macaw. And they live in the rainforest in South America. Yeah. And I've trained her to do some of my work for me. That's all. Yeah, hi there. So, Fiesta is really into recycling. Yeah. So, yes, it's in the recycling. It actually wasn't hard to train her to do that because where she would be found in the rainforest in South America, underneath the trees, a lot of the times, is a board called bauxite, which is the basic building material for new aluminum cans. So, yes, is just showing us the more that we recycle aluminum cans, the more rainforest there is and the more fiestas there are down there in South America. Thanks for doing that, Fiesta. Great job. Well, thank you very much. All right, we're two for two with training birds. Oh, the last bird I want to show you, he is a rookie just like me. His name is Henry, and he's a little pink bird. And I'm going to go in the back and go, he is so cute. You're going to fall in love with Henry. Uh, we're going to show you some stuff that Henry does. So, Henry? Uh, uh, Henry? Uh-oh. Henry? Henry, where? His door is open, but he's not his home. Henry! Well, he's little. Maybe he's hiding underneath this table. Henry! Oh, boy. Henry! This is not going well. Henry, I can't seem to find Henry. Henry! He disappeared on me. You can only find Henry! Where are you? Are you over here? Henry! Did everybody see Henry? Did everybody see Henry? Yeah? Where? Yeah? Where? He was right, right, right here? Yeah. Where? He's up here. Yeah, over here? He's right here. He, he just, oh, he's gone! Oh no, Henry, Henry! Oh, this is not good at all. All right, well listen, you guys have to help me. Anytime you see that little pink bird, just start screaming, his name is Henry. And maybe he'll hear you and stop, or maybe uh, I'll hear you and, and, and come out and get him. But I'm gonna probably be in trouble because I think I lost him. But, uh, Oh no, that's the start of music. All right, I don't have time to go for Henry. Hopefully it's okay. But if you see Henry, let me know. I gotta go out of position. So enjoy, everybody. I'll probably see you later. Bye-bye. Enjoy the bird show. No, I think he's up there by the waterfall. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Emeritus Wings of Wonder Bird Theater. All of the animals you are about to see will be demonstrating behaviors that would help them survive in the wild. We ask that you remain seated for the safety of the birds flying in the theater. And now, please welcome the birds of the Cincinnati Zoo. Thanks for visiting. 
listening to Zoo. Every time you come to the Cincinnati Zoo, you're actually helping wildlife from all over the world because the money that you spent on your ticket goes to help a bunch of different conservation projects all over the world, including ones that help birds just like our macaws, like Fiesta, our green wing macaw, Rio, our hyacinth macaw, and BG, the blue and gold macaw. out in the wild, including poaching for the pet trade, as well as habitat loss. But scientists here at the Cincinnati Zoo actually help blue and gold macaws specifically. Um, so they were once found on the island of Trinidad, but they actually disappeared from that island. But scientists from the zoo were actually able to introduce, reintroduce blue and gold macaws to that island. And now if you ever happen to find yourself in Trinidad and you look to the sky, you'll be sure to see uh, those blue and gold feathers flying overhead. Do you want to show them off for us, BG? There we go. Now macaws aren't just known for their beautiful feathers and flight. They're also really excellent climbers. So they have special toes, or special feet, called zygodactyl feet, which just means they have two toes in the front and two toes in the back that allow them to climb vines or branches. And their beaks also help them with climbing as well. Angela! Angela! Yeah, Angela. Yeah. I want to show you something. Can I show you something? Yeah, sure. Okay, what do you want to show me? I've been, I've been training the birds too, you know? You okay. want to show me how to train? Yeah, what have you been working on? So I've been, I've been, I've been working with Rio too. Not the movie, the bird, right? Oh, yeah, okay, so, cool, yeah, show me. Yeah. So, you trained to climb down the, the big rope, mm -hmm. and that was really good, and I learned from that. I learned how you did it. So then, I, I thought I'd take it to the next level, and I, I trained to climb down the tiny skinny rope. Ooh. Yeah, it's like a thread. You can get a sweater with it. And that is the challenge. So, before he gets going, we'll let him get a measurement in his feet. Very important, measure twice, climb once. They keep first. Okay. So, he does the same thing like he just did. He uses his feet and his beak and his tail for balance. And he's going to still play with the left on the top of the road. He's going to grab the feet. What? Rio! No! Yeah, I think you might have just outsmarted your training a little bit. But listen, the other birds, they really know like the chicken. Yeah. And, and Fiesta. And Maria. But wait. I want to show you this little bird. She's okay. really cute. Uh, just hold on one second. I'm going to go there and I'll show you. Okay. Uh, all right. It. All right, Bob. Now, despite Bob's excellent training abilities, macaws are really smart. So Rio there was probably just thinking smarter, not harder. And macaws are one of just the larger species of parrots. Parrots are found all over the world in a, a variety of different continents, and they come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. So, oh, so yes, sizes. I got you the little one. Who yeah, oh, oh, Abby. Like Abby. Yeah. Oh, oh, Bob. What, what, I actually, I have to go get ready for our next animal. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, later, okay? Oh, Abby. I promise. Later. Later. Oh, oh, Abby. We're already here. You guys want to see what Gabby can do? Yes! I do! Oh, wait, right. that's great, Gabby. Well, first... Oh, yeah, you're very excited. That's cool. Well, let's be polite to everybody. Uh, can you uh, blow them some kisses? Four kisses? Oh, that is so nice! And, uh, oh, what about being polite and just telling everybody a nice hello? Hello! 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 Very good. Hello, Gabby. Hello, Gabby. So, Gabby is a yellow-headed Amazon parrot. And they live in Central America, uh, now in, in parts of, well, not in Central America, but they do have uh, some right behind us here at the Wings of Wonder. Over that wall is a big, is it, what's that big kitty cat? Is it a big timer? The big timer? Yeah, that's right, the big timer lives right back there. And you also like to watch movies for enrichment. And one movie that she likes to watch has flying saucers that shoot laser beams. Very good. But your favorite thing, she loves the opera. And she loves to sing the opera. But she likes to do a duet. So I will start singing, and then she will take the solo. Here we go. Whoa, whoa, Oh, 
just, it just, it. Did you hear Gabby? She did great. That was Gabby singing that? Yeah, no, she did, but she was singing. Well, I guess that's why they say they may not make the best pets. I mean, could you imagine Gabby singing that loud at 2 o'clock in the morning? Oh, no. Gabby, that, oh, you interrupt my beauty sleep. You can stay here and let me do. I'll take care of you every day, but I need my sleep at night. Yeah, that's just one of the many reasons parents might not make the best pets. They also have that really big beak on their face, and they chew on everything and anything. And when they're in the home, that could be your furniture, your laptop. Oh, but speaking of beaks, this here is Terry, and she is rhinoceros hornbill. Now, Terry is from Southeast Asia, in the jungles of Malaysia, and the islands of Sumatra, Java, and Borneo. Now, she may look a little different than birds that you see here in Ohio, and that's because of that bird part she has on the top of her head, and it's called a cast. Almost completely off. Oh, That's very beneficial for her because the heavier you are as a bird, the harder it is to fly. And that cask is used for many different reasons. It also acts as a resonating chamber for her. So when she makes calls to friends or potential mates, that cask can help the sound travel for miles. Now, Terry plays a very important role in her environment for seed distribution in the jungle. She eats many different types of fruits, preferably figs, and they eat it almost completely whole. But their digestive systems, they cannot digest the seeds, so when rhinoceros hornbills go number two, they'll spread seeds all throughout the jungle. Now, she'll also use that cask because, believe it or not, Terry here is a cavity nester. She'll fit herself inside a cavity, she'll build her nest, and she'll fit herself inside there with the eggs. So build up a mud wall with a hole in it just large enough so that the male can feed her while she's incubating the eggs. And after he's a little crack in there, the eggs start to hatch. She'll actually use the cask on the top of her head and she'll go right out of this mud with her cavity. And then she'll rebuild it back up with a hole just large enough so that she can feed her young right after that. And that was Terry, the rhinoceros hornbill. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. Now, we're traveling around the world a little bit. We went to Central and South America with the parrot, and then traveled across the ocean to Southeast Asia with the rhinoceros hornbill. But there's some pretty cool birds right here in your own backyard. And if you want to see more of them, you can help build a better wildlife like we have right here at the Bird Encounter. Now, we've built a bird house that's right behind uh, where Terry landed over there, so that's actually a red bird house. Or you could build a bird house that's really hard to, or bird feeder on this side that's really hard to see, so we can find car calls. And also, if you have a lake in your backyard, you can encourage Ducks, just like this. This is Donald and Howard, and they are our Happy Campbell ducks. Now, you might see ducks just like this at your home, local lakes and ponds. You might feed them things, but I've actually learned bread is not very good for ducks. It's not very nutritious, and it makes them feel full with the allocating that full nutrition. So, if you guys want to feed the ducks, you can bring them things like leafy greens or lettuce. They also like mealworms! Like, mealworms! Yeah, plus, like mealworms! Plus, they love mealworms! Yeah, that's what I was feeding them, Bob. Oh, oh, really? Well, no. But you know what mealworms are? What are mealworms? Baby beetles! <laughs> yeah. Okay, I see what you did there, Bob. Baby beetles, but, oh, but if they like baby beetles, do you think they like Papa Roach? Papa Roach. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they want anything to do with roaches, but... Oh, all right, well, what about scorpions? You scorpions? Scorpions? <laughs> yeah. I don't think they want anything to do with scorpions. Why is that? I mean, they're dangerous, they're venomous. The venomous? Well, then this goes in there. Come on, ducks, let's get out of here. Oh. Also, the scorpions have been on tour since the 90s. Let's go. Yeah, Howard, I don't think you have Hurry, to worry. Howard. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. I mean, we don't even have scorpions here in Ohio. Howard, don't listen to him. Howard. <laughs> they have other predators they have to worry about, like uh, raptors. So we have hawks and owls and eagles. But they're really important because of rodent control. What is it? What is he no talking raptors, about now? What, Buskin, what are you doing talking to all these folks about rodent control in the winds of wonder? I was telling everyone because we had no raptors, those hawks, those owls, those eagles. We would have mice running all over the Two mice, who reproduced to be over a million mice in just over a year. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A million mice? Yes, and they carry human diseases. Ew, diseases! Yeah, it's really gross. <laughs> oh, gross! All of them can crawl all over your poo while you're sleeping at night? Oh, yeah, right. my belly! Are they you okay, Bob? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that image of all those oh, mice! I think I'm against the back. Oh, no, there's no sound. Oh, I'm just going out of here. Oh, my belly! No, 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 no. Uh, he's good. Yeah, he really is. Uh, no, this isn't funny. We've got a 
Well, I can't, I can't get them off stage by myself. Can I get some help from the uh, cleanup crew? Uh, yes, the cleanup crew. Oh! Oh! Well, Boris plays a very important role in the environment for disease control. He can strip a carcass straight to the bone. Oh, no, 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 I'll tell you a funny story later. Don't oh, remind me. For disease control, they eat carry, which is the rotting dead carcass. If you guys might find it on the side of the road, they may have died from a disease, and actually vultures are immune to disease, so they can help oh, stop the spread of the disease. Oh, that does not sound good. I better go in the back and check on Bob. Uh, Bob, I heard glass, man. Of course, look, Jason, are you okay? Oh, there you Oh, Sydney, he was just filling it up for me. What did you do? My 
me. Now, Henry, where you're found in Australia, water is very scarce. So you better drink some of this water, okay? Here, you want some of this water? There you go. You drink down. Very good. And then I better finish it because water is a very important resource not to waste. Yeah, water is a really important resource. In fact, birds are a great indicator species for the health of our water. When there are chemicals in the water, bird species will actually disappear from that area. Did you use the harmful chemicals in the water? But pro probably not in that bath of water. That water that, that, that yeah. water? Okay. We need to so, so this one's okay. Henry, you don't have to spit that up. But speaking of disappearing, Henry, I better get you home before you disappear on me again. This time I'll remember to shut your door. Yeah, yeah, remember to shut his door, Bob. That would be a good idea. You know, Bob is still Bob, but he's done an awesome job in his first year as a bird trainer. He's always the first to arrive, the last to leave. He spends a lot of time getting to know the birds and building trust with them. So I think we should reward Bob and let him train Sam. Hey, Bob, want to come back what? out here? Oh, what? Want to come out here? I know. What? Do you? Oh, well, Sydney. Hi there. Do you want to train Sam? Do I want to train Sam? I sure do. Is that a good idea, Sid? Yeah. yeah? Okay. I sure do. Wait. Train Sam. Yeah, do you know what you need? I do. It's over here in this magical log. It's the glove. The glove of Gary. And I need the glove to catch our last bird. The next Sam needs to go over there. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. All right, let's do this in three, two, one. Let's go. Oh, yeah. So Sam is a bald eagle. He's a 19-year-old bald eagle. The reason he is here is right here on his right wing. When he was only four months old, he was found on the side of a highway up in Michigan, and a good-natured trucker found Sam. But with his broken wing, he wasn't doing any flies, so Sam was pretty hungry. So eventually, Sam made his way to Michigan State University. They tried to patch up his wing as best they could, but unfortunately his break is too severe and he's never been able to survive or be released for the wild. He can fly down, he just can't fly up on his own. But he made his forever home here in 2003 at the Wings of Wonder and has been an amazing guy here ever since. Yeah, so Sam has served as an awesome ambassador for his species. At one point, bald eagles were actually in danger due to harmful chemicals in the water that made their eggshells too weak in order to hatch. But we as humans recognize this problem, made changes, and bald eagles have had an amazing comeback. In the last 15 years, bald eagle nests in Ohio have tripled. So we're lucky to have Sam here to help share that story, and it just goes to show that it's the little things and the big things that we can do to help us build a better home for wildlife. So thanks guys for coming out to Wings of Wonder, and I hope you have a great day.